welcome to the Rock Your Dream Body and Dream Life interview series. Today, I am here with my good friend, Lori Brucker. So to tell you a little bit about Lori, she is a certified image consultant, personal stylist, community leader, and motivational speaker, and is all about style empowerment. Lori brings 14 years of experience in the fashion industry with two certifications in image consulting from the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York City and from Stacey London from TLC's What Not to Wear and Love, Lust, or Run. Lori brings realistic and attainable style advice that she uses to create possibility, empowerment, and to promote personal growth and achievement. So welcome, Lori. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yes, I'm so excited. This is like something that hits close to home for me too. Because as I was saying before we started the recording, I'm like, I need you, girl. I need you to come in and like help me. We can all use a little bit of Lori in our lives. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you tell me, you know, first, like I love starting off these interviews by talking about how you began rocking your dream body and dream life from this sure. style empowerment kind of an idea. Sure. Well, you know, I... I, as a stylist, I've worked with so many different kinds of women, but one of the really interesting thing that's interesting things that's happened for me is that the way that I've developed my style tools for my clients really comes out of my own personal style story. And I believe that everyone has their own style story. And mine has really brought me to all these um, very practical ideas on how to get dressed and how to really work with what you have so that you can be your most empowered self. So when I used to be a fashion designer, I lived in New York City and I did not make a lot of money and except I was working in this industry where it was all about glamour and you know high fashion and designers but I couldn't afford that so when I it's funny because I in hindsight I now see why that was so important for me to experience because I really do translate that um, but I really would use like pieces that I would get um, inexpensively and style them in a way that was so uniquely creative that I felt like, well, if I couldn't be like anyone else, I was going to be utterly different and totally me. And the interesting thing is like coworkers would be like, I saw you walking down the street and I'm like, you look good girl. I'm like, thanks. But I'm wearing a t-shirt from Target and like pants from H&M. And, you know, I, I utilized style to almost mask a little bit of my insecurities so that I could feel better about myself and in turn it really helped me d create a style for me that made me feel great mm -hmm. and then as my body changed over time as I got older you know just things change you know how to then start taking all of that into making it feel good for me too when I look at my body in the mirror because that's a whole huge aspect to it so all these things are part of my own insecurities and my challenges that I've broken through that I bring to clients Yes. And I, and I, I totally get that. It's like our story is such a piece of what we can then use to help other women that are then struggling, you know, that are now struggling with a lot of the same things. And so when you are working with a client and she's in that spot where she's like, I just want to know how to put together some out, outfits or like, where do I even start? Yeah. What's like the process that you take them through? Well, I think first and foremost, we have to address fit um, because a lot of times when we have body insecurities, we tend to pick wardrobe items that may not be the best pieces for ourselves. So let and like I've always struggled with my midsection. So of course, like, you know, what happens when we feel like we have a bigger midsection? We want to hide it. So then we bring in drapey, you know, cardigans that drape and fold down the front or like an oversized shirt that's really square and boxy or something that bands at the bottom. So it kind of rounds with you. And these types of pieces are actually adding more bulk to our bodies. So what happens is you might feel insecure about that area of your body, but now you're dressing that area and you're adding more with to it. So it's one of those things that's challenging us when we get dressed. And then we see ourselves and we feel like, oh, I don't look good still. Uh, this is what I have. Mm -hmm. So fit, knowing your fit is so, so important. And we working with the body type. So you want to find what fits best for you. And the key to this is finding what work follows your frame. So tailoring and having something fit to your frame is going to instantly slim your body. So instead of going for that baggier piece, go for something with structure that has fit or waist definition, you'll see yourself in the mirror already instantly slimmer with that. So like adding a belt 
like a tight yeah. belt for someone who's maybe sensitive about their midsection. Yes. Oh, well, see, you, like that's like a key word for me. I have this saying, and it works for everything. So you have to try it. I encourage everyone to try it. Is a when in doubt, belt it out. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's a very simple rule, but when I'm when I do, I actually have a talk about belts because it's um, a women empowerment talk. Because I, I really think the belt is a key integral part to working with every body type. It is the common denominator for every body type to working best with its frame. You wanna always define your waist. So a belt is a great way to do that. Um, but a lot of people don't know where their belt sits and that is what begins to challenge them. So when you, you have a little bit around the middle, we think that, well, we don't want to put a belt there. But the idea is that if you wear it at your high waist, which is actually two inches below your rib cage, two inches or two inches above your belly button, right at the lowest part of your rib cage, mm -hmm. wearing a belt there, it's the high waist. That is what's going to lengthen your frame, elongate your legs, and also give you an hourglass shape. So by adding that into any outfit, whether you put it over a top, over a dress, or maybe over a top at a cardigan, even over that, it still adds enough waist definition to help you feel slim. The most important part in this is that you have to look in the mirror and you have to love what you see. So styling yourself so that you can see how beautiful you already are is, is the most important part. Amen, girl. And that's feeling amazing in your skin. Like that's that confidence. Like when we have this, and that's, that's why style, you know, I, I, I just went to go see my eyebrow stylist the other day and she's like, <laughs> he's like women who invest in themselves value themselves. And I was like, Oh my God, that's like a truth bomb. Because when you start either investing time or, you know, taking care of yourself in this way and figuring out like what style is your style and how to wear clothes that make you feel like that empowered woman, then it's like you can walk around and even if you're still working on specific body goals or whatever, it's like you can be confident and happy right now and just freaking own it while you're in the process of becoming more and more and, you know, continuing to better yourself. It's so funny because even as a stylist, like it's all about clothes. You'd think it would be all about clothes, but for me, it's the, it's about that inner part too. Like I really, I like to enforce self care as part of the style discovery process, yeah. because when you take care of yourself, you feel better about yourself. You know, you're taking care of yourself. And that could be anything from taking a bubble bath to working out to, you know, spending a couple hours in your closet, invite a best friend over, get a glass of wine or whatever you want to drink, have some fun, healthy snacks and go into your closet and just play dress up. Like giving yourself that time is so valuable to the process of style because you need to do that for yourself if you want to have style. The biggest challenge I have is that with clients is that I see that they are not spending the time they want to for their style. So they say that I just want it to be easy and I'm really lazy. And I, and a lot of people come to me with that and I totally get it, but style is a mindset like all things. It's really a mindset choice that you have to consider and choose to do when you get up in the morning to go have your day. And the biggest reality is that you have to get dressed. Yeah. <laughs> you, ha you have to open up your closet and face those demons every morning. You cannot not do that. You can go out naked and there will be, you know, someone calling the police for a crazy neighbor lady who's walking out naked. She couldn't figure out what to wear today. But, <laughs> but the truth is, like, you have to face those demons. So let's face them. Face yeah. them, accept them, and let's move forward so that you can feel confident in you. So what are some of the basics that you tend to recommend for most of your clients when it comes to like certain pieces? Mm -hmm. Well, I, tailoring, like I said, fit is so important. So I have a list of like my, do you mean like basics of the actual items or? Yeah, like items that pretty much every woman kind of wants to have in her closet in some yeah. way. So I think that there should be a blend of a couple of types of pieces in your closet. I think you should have pieces with structure. And I think you should have pieces that have looseness and the comfortability to them too. Now for all different kinds of style. Um, so I have a list called the Lori's modern must haves. And that list really is like the, you know, what I think every woman should have in her closet to have a well-balanced wardrobe. And in it, it consists of 
the varying types of items like a structured blazer. The reason why I love a structured blazer for anyone in business, entre entrepreneurial, or in an office is that it adds structure and shape and angles and shoulder. It's really strong and it's powerful. So you can feel strong and powerful in it. Now, then you might want to have like a, a button down alternative. So instead of like that classic button down shirt, having some type of like chiffon or silky type fabric. Now having something like that, that will then give you a looseness and a softness and a femininity. So you can actually like in a work situation, do a soft like dress shirt, but then put your blazer over it. So you get the softness Maybe it's softer on the middle too, gives you a little room, but then the blazer adds structure. So I like mixing in a wardrobe pieces of structure and pieces of, you know, fluid, fluidity or casual comfortableness. Like one of, one of the hot trends happening right now is called athleisure. Have you heard of this? No, but I kind of feel like I know where you're going and I yeah. like it. But yeah, athleisure is like, and it's so funny because it's kind of already been out there, but now it's like has a term and a name, but it's a really fun style to play around, especially for people who love sports and um, love that like sporty style. It's the idea that you're going to mix your sport wear with your dressier pieces. Mm -hmm. So you can take like, you know, now I'm not saying everyone is allowed to wear yoga pants all the time because I do work my hardest <laughs> to help women find a comfortable alternative. But let's say you are going to wear your yoga pants and like a pair of Adidas kicks. You can wear like a drapey white shirt, but then a moto jacket over it mm -hmm. and it becomes an outfit. So the idea with like, for me, style is very simple. It's, it's about creating outfits as opposed to just wearing your clothes. And by doing that kind of styling technique for yourself, by creating the outfit, it helps you have more fun getting dressed, which makes getting dressed more fun, which means you have a better morning, and then you have a better day. Yeah, and you feel more feminine. And I think that I love that you're saying this idea of structure and softness, because I, that's another theme that's been coming up. And it's something that I talk a lot about with food, is that you need to have structure, and then you need to have freedom. And depending on where you're at, you can play with where you're, like, comfortable on that balance but I think it's really like masculine feminine like yes. masculine structure feminine soft and that's where you have this it's like a playful balance and so if you're showing up for the corporate world or you're going out on a date whatever it is it's like having the structure to help you feel that confidence from that masculine sense but then also like the feminine softness for leaning back so I love cool. that. That's so true. And it's like, you know, cause I, I say style, I have a lot of sayings. <laughs> I have this other saying, um, <laughs> style is all about contrast. So yeah. when you're putting an outfit together, you should be considering these contrasting ideas and utilizing, um, you know, the impression you want to present yourself, like, uh, the impression you want to make to whoever you're presenting yourself to, even if it's for yourself, you know, like, you add, adding that into the mix to decide what levels of how you want to do that. So, you know, if you are walking into a big board meeting of some sort or like a new client meeting, you might want to add more structure and a little less softness, but maybe you're meeting with a client one-on-one -on -one and that requires a little more like approachability and you want to add more soft lit softness and maybe a, a casual tone like a denim, but then you still have your pump in your blazer, your pump in your, you know, moto jacket or whatever that is so that you add this tough and structure mixed with the soft and the casual. So creating those contrasts gives a lot of people a lot of opportunity to do more with their clothes, which means you end up saving money because you're going to get more wear out of what you have. Yes. Then you can kind of pair them up and use them in different ways. That's the oh, thing yeah. I, th I think a lot of people maybe don't realize is like one of the things that you do or someone that's like a stylist can help you with is figuring out how to like mix and match. So oh, you're yeah. not like, this is one outfit and this is one outfit, but it's like, no, I can pull these things together and use them in, in many different ways and add different jewelry and totally. I, you know, and it's, that's kind of my favorite thing to do. I, I, it's like called shopping the closet. Like you could tell me that you have nothing to work with in your closet. And uh, there's only been one, there's only been two situations where I've not been able to come up with a million outfits. One, the woman had just moved here and literally had nothing in her closet Two, the other one was a hoarder and had, five closets of like multiple items and I actually was overwhelmed I'm like how do you get dressed in this it's so hard I can't, I can't even figure it out but so many times in our closets we have everything very separated we have our workout gear we have our casual gear we have our work gear and then we have our date night gear so what I'm you know challenging everyone to do is to like break up the routine and switch that up 
take your date night dress and wear it with your casual shorts or your date night top and wear it with your casual shorts with an espadrille for the summer or you know take that moto jacket and wear it with your like workout pants and like a cool like strappy you know um uh bra and like you know have like that cool sporty shape like you can have so much fun with your clothes and that is that self-care to take care of yourself giving you that fun experience is a part of what gives you the energy that creates style because it really it comes from within yes so yes. what are some of your top tips like i wanted there's two things i wanted to touch on so tips for someone like where to go that would be like your everyday essentials like where do you typically shop for your everyday essential type mm -hmm. items number one and then i'll let you talk say that first and then i'll go to the next question sure so it's so funny i have um i, I once somebody once people ask me a lot like what's my favorite store as a stylist and i and one time a couple of times i've told this answer i'm gonna tell you and i literally get this look like i have three heads on because you'd think that a stylist would be like go to Barney's or go, you know, oh, I love this fabulous boutique, uh, you know, and this one, you know, Marina Del Rey, that's going to give you this. No, I, I love Banana Republic. <laughs> it is my favorite store. I love, I have like this, I, it's one of my favorite stores. You can get, wonder, you know, this might be Banana Republic actually. Oh. My, <laughs> my shirt is too. I love banana. I'm a huge fan of theirs because they have classic basics but they also have really peppered in a lot of like high fashion stuff like asymmetrical cut skirts and really feminine blouses and their jewelry is phenomenal i always love digging through the sale jewelry and they have sales all the time so you can get a lot of great stuff on a great budget like they have a ton of leather stuff this spring and suede and i've just really been in i really love their stores and it's a great price point when you are building a business and you know you don't have as much money that you want to spend on your wardrobe but you do need some key pieces they they will have that and they'll have those good tailoring pieces and they'll have the soft pieces um you know so i really love them i love going to h&m for quickie fast fashion like these earrings are h&m they're like totally sassy and fun and they make a classic shirt look exciting you know and that's kind of what you can do with your style um so i like those for like mid-tier i love nordstrom's i'm a huge nordstrom fan i think because a department store in general will have a range of high and low that you can play with so it's really smart to invest in like key items like handbags shoes even a suit and a suit is not just worn once. You can wear your jacket separately and your pants separately. So really consider it three pieces you're investing in. Mm -hmm. Those are great pieces to invest in. And then you can get high fashion stuff and have fun at lower prices so that you can really get a good range and mix because it's not about how much you spend. It's how you, you put it together and how you feel in it. My mom used to say to me, price per wear. Like if this oh, is yeah, something yeah. you're going to wear all the time, then invest in it. Get it, you know, get that really high quality item versus something that you know maybe you wash a few times or can't wash whatever you know that will kind of fall apart totally and, and you know and i think um a lot of people who haven't shopped for themselves in a while like that would seem easy but they're like overwhelmed with like where do i begin so it is really get those like key investment pieces those that will kind of bring up the level of what you're currently wearing so if it is the blazer or like the ankle crop pant is one of my new favorite shapes it's it's kind of like the alternative to the dress pant or the the trouser and it elongate it's great for tall and short it elongates legs it's kind of like that cigarette style pant it comes in colors and patterns and and you can have so much fun with it you can wear it with a t-shirt and flats and you can wear it with pumps and a a crisp button down you can wear it with a date night blouse or a peplum top like there's so many different ways that you can wear it so like a great that would be a good investment piece because you can translate it into all different wear like areas of your life mm -hmm. there's also um if you know if you're like shopping out there and you know there's a piece that you love if you can't think of more than three ways to style it with the stuff you currently own i typically recommend not getting it because mm -hmm it's so easy to buy that impulse piece that we think is going to make us feel good but then we have no idea what to do with it it sits in our closet with the tags on we've all done it i've done it Two years later i'm like oh i know what to do with it now but i'm so mad i spent like you know however much like two years ago <laughs> i should have cleaned it out we've all done it but it hel it's helpful when you feel overwhelmed to know that if you give yourself these like rules and guidelines that it's okay to invest in something that you will have an, like at least three ways you can wear it, and then you get better cost per wear, you'll wear it more often. 
So do you recommend kind of going through your closet, getting clear on what pieces you need, making a list, and then going shopping specifically for those pieces? I think that that's, it's good to have a plan because it becomes overwhelming. Yeah. There's, there's the two overwhelming sides. There's one, we have too much in our closet and it's hard to find what we're looking for to get dressed. So we end up tending to pull out the same pieces. Like there's a, a statistic that's we wear 20% of our closet 80% of the time. Mm -hmm. So basically we're wearing the same pieces over and over and there's so much more that you could possibly use or maybe it's time to let go of it. And clearing out that space and that process is a self-care piece to the puzzle. But it also, it helps you kind of go through the demons and acknowledge what is going on in there. Is it, does it really fit? Does it really make you feel good? Like I have a really hard and fast rule. If like for what's in your closet, if you put it on and it doesn't like fit and you put it on, you're like, I feel amazing in it. Like if you can't do that, you don't need it. You should just feel amazing in your clothes every single time you put it on mm -hmm. and nothing, you know, like I, was, I had a client that had these two skirts singing in her closet and I pulled them up. I'm like, what are you going to do with these? She's like, oh, those are my ugly skirts. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, what do you do with them? She's like, well, I wear them on days I feel gross and fat. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> we're getting rid of those. And here's why. <laughs> Because if you're feeling gross, why are you yeah. putting on pieces that are going to make you feel worse? You have yeah. to find something that makes you feel good. We're getting rid of it. So the cleaning out is a huge therapeutic process that can happen. And then it also then can show you the gaps of what's missing in your closet. So now you can map out, you know, okay, I definitely need a couple new pairs of pants. I need a new skirt. I need a new date night blouse, something that makes you feel sexy. I need a couple new dresses. Okay, and then you can start mapping out from there then what stores you're gonna go to to kind of meet your budget needs and get what you need from that. So keeping organized with it is helpful because it can be so overwhelming, especially if you haven't taken care of yourself in this capacity in a long time. Yes, and I think a lot of times what happens is that women do open their closet and they feel like I don't feel like myself yet. You know, I don't feel like I'm ready to just like face the world and be that confident version of myself. Yeah. But what they don't realize is when they start finding those pieces that, that help them to like maybe even baby step their way there, it's like something that's comfortable but sexy at the same time. So it's not like you have to go buy these clothes that are like, don't feel like who you are. You literally want to find your style and then enhance it, really, right? Absolutely. And enhance your features. So I have a, um, a quick, fun little rule and style game you can play with yourself every day. Or it could be different every day. It could be the same thing every day. But um, I, I call it accept, distract, attract. And it's uh, another saying. Uh, and, it's, <laughs> and it's the idea that um, whatever, you know, when you wake up in the morning and you're about to get dressed, like what is bothering you the most when you look in the mirror? Mm -hmm. You can answer that. Is it your hips? Is it your ankles? Is it your shoulder? What, whatever that is for you. Look at your mirror and say, I do not love this right now about myself. Okay. We're going to accept it. We're going to just move forward because you can work to change it. And maybe you are working on changing your weight or your body frame, like whatever that is, but it might not be different tomorrow, but you can feel good tomorrow by doing this. So accept it. We're going to move forward. Mm -hmm. Now you want to distract away from it. So we want to do colors and dark colors in that area, vertical lines if you want to lengthen it, anything that's going to keep the attention away from that. So we're going to draw, you know, distract by using dark colors, slim silhouettes, and just keep it kind of like the back, you know, the, the back burner of your outfit. Then you need to look in there and say, well, what do I love about myself? Maybe it's your, maybe it's your collarbones. Maybe it's your smile. Maybe it's your arms and your wrists. You love that your wrists are slim, you know, whatever that is for you. Now we want to attract to what you love. So now you're going to start adding to your outfit, something bright and colorful and attention grabbing in the area that you love. So, and if you start styling like this, you can actually, you get to style for what you love every day and make the thing you don't love your second, it's like on the back burner of your outfit. Like it's, it's a supporting character in the cast of your full look. You want your key characters to be like, I want you to keep, I want you to keep your eyes right here with me. And I'm going to wear these bright yellow earrings that you can see because you look at my smile and it's going to go well with my hair and you don't have to look at anything else below that. That's the key, you know, like you can do that and you can have fun with your style every day, you know, acknowledging what you love and then styling it.
Mm -hmm. I think that's so true. And just finding like a lot of times it is really hard, like in the beginning, especially when you're coming from a place where you haven't really felt love for yourself or any sort of appreciation for a while. Mm -hmm. And, and you start to say like, what can I highlight? Like we do that with makeup. We do that, you know, like we highlight our eyes and we, our lips, whatever. We can do the same thing with our style and mm -hmm. we can, we can let our own thing shine through whatever that is. So there's like, you know, I, I, I know you, you've said like boho chic or like things where you're, you know, like laid back here in California is like such a, a thing. And so yeah. <laughs> you can have that like comfortable style that's actually sexy too, or you can be the business suit corporate woman, but have that little flair and have some color and stuff like that too. Throw some leopard in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's all kinds of different ways where you can play with it and really make this that adventure. Like I, I think you said it too, self-discovery, like this style discovery. Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you have to really, it is about style discovery. You have to get back to the beginning. And sometimes you just have to like, I have a, you know, you have to really like wipe from your head everything you've been telling yourself. This is hard. It's not easy, but like everything you've been telling yourself you can't do. Everything that you've been told that you can't do. Everything that you were told that you shouldn't do. Everything you can, you, because how many times have we like walked down the street and we see someone wearing a great outfit or like skimming on Pinterest and we're like, oh, that is so cool. I could never do that. Mm -hmm. And it's that limiting belief that you could never do that that's already stopping you from being that. So maybe based on who your frame or your coloration or that we might tweak it a little bit for you. That doesn't mean you can't do something similar. If you see a great outfit and it, it compiles a jean, a blouse, a great pair of earrings and a leopard heel. Okay. Well maybe you have the jeans and you have a top you love and you have an earring pair that you love and you don't have a leopard heel, but you do have a leopard flat. Leave an instant outfit there and you were able to do that on your own just by seeing it and knowing that you can do it. Like if I could do anything for everybody today, it's to give you permission to just go try it. We stop ourselves so many times mm -hmm. from really expressing what we want to express and trying that thing that scares us or we believe isn't going to work for us, but just try it. I mean, I encourage you to try it. Maybe it doesn't work that one time or, or, or it works and you're like, oh my God. I'm like a whole new person. I had no idea I could put leopard with this cool floral skirt and I have a whole new outfit. Just go try it. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about, this is kind of a side note, but like, what do you think about when women ask their husbands for their opinion on their outfits? Like, do you think that's helpful or do you think they should just be like, mm. I got this advice or I'm following this new thing and I'm just going to freaking rock it. And that confidence then is what makes, you know, makes you attractive versus saying like, Mm -hmm. Does this look good on me or, you know, that kind of a thing? That is a really good question. And it made me do my like, hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I really would have to think, you know, I guess I could see two sides of that. You know, one, it's nice to have the encouragement of, you know, your significant other to say you look beautiful. And maybe, maybe while you're discovering your style, there's an expectation set to your partner saying like, I'm going to be trying new things with my style. I might ask your opinion, you know, be, you know, like, and, and kind of set the stage of what you want them to kind of like guide you into. Like, give that, give you something positive, but also if it's not the best thing, because the thing about men is that they are very simple. And I've <laughs> learned this myself. Men like a jeans and a t-shirt, a fit and flare dress, and something very simple. They don't get the big earrings. They don't get all of like the pattern mixing. Like there's definitely something to be said for dressing for guys and dressing for girls, you know? So if uh, it's something that you really want to just creatively express yourself and just kind of go out there and just try all new crazy things. I say totally rock it, but set up the expectation to your husband that you're going to be, tr or, or partner, that you're going to be trying new things. And if he doesn't love it, let you rock it for the day without him saying something. Cause I, I, another saying, you have to get uncomfortable to get comfortable. So if you have to push your comfort level in trying some outrageous outfit, you don't definitely don't need someone to tell you first thing in the morning, are you sure? I would rather you go and feel confident that you put some like sassy outfit together and go hit the town and, and see what happens. See how people react. See how you feel. It might be that throughout the day, it is starting to like feel like, oh, maybe this was a little much. But you tried it and that's yeah. amazing. So next time, ditch one print, add a solid, you know, and, and you can start 
learning as you go. I mean, it really is that discovery process. Yes. And giving yourself that, that I like to call it act. So here's my saying, yeah. act, act, analyze, adjust. Like you take action, you do something. And then later you look at it and you're like, okay, oh, how'd that go? And then the next day or whatever you adjust. That totally works for this. Totally. Mm-hmm. And I think for women out there, I'm like, yes, you know, I, something I do is like, you know, I, I, on Skype or in person, I can come to someone's home and show them how to like make all these outfits. But even when I do that with my clients, I won't take them shopping for at least a week or two because I want them to try that out. I want them to go do everything they possibly can to, to, to experience this new sense of themselves. Cause when I'm sitting, when I'm in someone's home and we're putting on a belt for the first time. And, you know, you finally, like, I'm telling them, why don't you tuck in your blouse into your pencil skirt? And they're like, really? I'm like, yes, here, let's put a belt on top of that, you know? And (laughs) and then you turn them into the mirror and all of a sudden they're looking at themselves like, I cannot believe this is me. Mm -hmm. I had no idea I could try this. I had no idea I could do this. Mm -hmm. So as you continue to, so that in itself, like seeing yourself that way is such a moment. I always makes me like cry. I'm like such a sap in my appointments. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> but like, you know, but then like we start continuing to style and it's like, Oh wait, can I put a belt on this? And I'm like, yes, you can. And it's just the, I, the curiosity of, can I do this? That you should answer. Yes, you should try it. Mm-hmm. So whether you have a, you know, an expert supporting you in it, or you're just doing it at home on your own and really having that personal experience for yourself, like, yes, you should try it. Why not? Nothing's get bad's going to come up of it other than you might discover like this whole fabulous new outfit or you might act, adjust. And what is it? Act, act, analyze, adjust. Analyze and adjust. You act, you see it and you're like, eh, well, maybe that didn't work. But what if I try this and you adjust it and then you find the new outfit? You have to have that process for yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's again, self-care. It's time for you. You're, you're giving yourself like fun time to get dressed up and you're allowing yourself to do it. It's okay. Yes. And that's that feminine, like, you know, being girly and taking time for yourself. And especially when a lot of times we put that as like last on the list of priorities. So it's so important. I think we definitely brought up a lot of things that people, uh, women can relate to and sort of start to plug in. And so I just want to wrap up by asking, is there anything that we, we didn't cover today that you wanted to make sure that you shared? Um, I, yes, I have this one really amazing, you can do immediately tomorrow tip that I love sharing. It's my, I can't, I can't even believe I didn't bring it up, but, um, it's, uh, it's called the four piece formula mm-hmm. and every outfit you put together should have four pieces involved. So you're not, no more, you're wearing a top and a bottom or a t-shirt and jeans or a blouse and a skirt. What are four pieces you can add? Shoes do not count and purses do not count. So okay. does that mean if you're going to wear a blouse and a skirt, are you adding a belt and a necklace? Are you adding a statement earring and a jacket? Are you adding a cardigan and a belt over that? What are you doing to add those two extra pieces? And I, I love, love it. Yeah. This rule is really easy because it's the same for everybody, but the way you utilize it for you is your style. It's your own creativity. It's your own process. It's your own pieces. So whatever you end up doing is who you is who you are and who you can be. So, you know, it's something you can have fun with. A lot of people get to about three pieces and end. So and the fourth tends to be an accessory. Accessorizing is pretty big. So it's really what makes the full total look come together. Mm -hmm. And also is a great way to show personality. So adding this fourth piece and these four, and you can have more than four pieces, like by all means, more is more, have fun with it. But a minimum of four really forces you to say, well, wait, do I have four pieces on? And what is one more piece I can add? And then go with something unexpected. Try something Mm -hmm. new. I love that. Yeah. Try something you never would have put like, well, what if I did those crazy dressy dangly earrings with my t-shirt? Why not? Go mm-hmm. for it. Yeah, and that makes it very simple because you're like, okay, four. I can do four. And that is something people will remember when they're getting yeah. casual. And you can do it tomorrow. Like, see what happens. I love when people call me. They're like, I'm wearing my four pieces today. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I love it. Go get it. <laughs> oh, my God, Lori. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time today. Thank you for having me. I love, I love sharing the good word of style that, like, everyone deserves to feel stylish. And it comes from within And creating that really is about taking your time with yourself in your closet and re-experiencing who you are and who you want to be and putting that to your wardrobe.
Yes. Amen. And I know you have a special gift for everyone if they want to learn more about you and maybe take this further. So where should we send them? And can you tell me a little bit about what that is? Yeah. So I actually have, uh, if you go to lauribstyle.com, right on that main page, front, right, and center is a gift. And it's, it's five steps to your style empowerment. Find your style, find yourself. And it's going to give you five tools to find your style right now. Because you do have a style and it does have terms that you can put it to. So what does that look like? And I'm going to walk you through all of those steps. So easy, things you can do at home, things you can do right now to really get that discovery process. So you can be on your way and have a clearer vision of what you want to be going forward. I love it. That's awesome. Makes it very simple. Again, not overwhelming at all. It shouldn't be. And that's the, that is the one thing I think a lot of stylists and just fashion in general out there is so overwhelming. If I can simplify it, make it easy and let you know and empower you to know that it's up to you and how you feel is the most important part. That's, that's what I want everyone to be left with. Yes, me too. It's so important. Just feeling amazing in your skin. That's the name of the game, right? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Lori. And I will see everyone in the next interview.